All right, so, so far we have learned how to get, how to retrieve our data out of our database and tables. But in real life scenarios, we will be doing a lot of calculations, aggregations on top of the data in order to get something meaningful of it, in order to get some useful information of the data. So in SQL projects, we tend to use a lot of aggregations in order to understand the data because we have in the data model sometimes like big tables and just reading the raw data, we will not get any useful information of it. So we have to do some aggregations on top of it in order to understand the data. So that means understanding the SQL aggregate functions are very important and very essential in learning SQL in order to get some informations out of the data. In SQL, we have the following aggregate functions. They are really easy. So if you just read the function name, you will understand what SQL gonna do once you execute those functions. So the count, it gonna return the number of rows in a table. Sum, it's gonna summarize the values. We have the average, then we have max bin to return the maximum value and the minimum value. I will go through all of them, explain that step by step with examples as usual. But here it is very important to understand how each function is gonna deal with the nulls, those empty fields that we don't have a value because each function is gonna deal with the nulls differently. All right, so now let's start with the first function we have. It is the count. It is as well the easiest one with that we have in the aggregation functions. In many situations, once you are working like, let's say, in new projects, you have a lot of tables. The first thing that I tend to use is to see, OK, how many like customers do we have? How many orders? How many, let's say, employees we have? Depend on the table. So I usually always check that to see how many records do we have in each table? Is it like a big table? Is it small table? So if we have the following task that says, find the total number of customers in the database. OK, so let's solve that using SQL. First, I want to get like all the data from the table customers. We usually do that using select star from customers. So that is easy. Now we can see, okay, we have five customers at the table, but the task it says, find the total number of customers. That means I want to see as a result only the number five, the total number of customers. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the function count. So after the select, I'm gonna type here the keyword count, open brackets and close brackets. And inside the count, you could specify either star or the name of the column. So let's see with the star. And execute that. And as you can see now, we got like five as the row numbers of customers in the table. So here we have now counted how many customers do we have. But as you can see here, the name of the column, I don't really like it. It's like the function name. So let's rename it for the results as total customers. So let's re-execute that. And now it looks better. So the total number of customers, we have it as five. As I said, we could use here like star or a column name. So this is the easiest way to do a count on the table using the star. But if you now include the column name, it's going to be a little bit more tricky because of the nulls. So let's see what's going to happen if I type over here, customer ID. And run the query. We will get the same informations like five. But if I put over here, not the customer ID, but the score. And you will see we have now four. So here we have like four scores. We don't have like five customers. So what happened over here? So now let me explain you what the database is doing. Once you say count star or count a column. If you say count star, you are not specifying any column. The database is gonna go to the table and gonna just count how many rows we have in the table. So the database is gonna count one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five rows in the table and as a result, you will get five. But if you say, okay, count score, if you put the score inside the count, the database is going to count how many values do we have inside the score. And it's going to ignore the nulls. And here it is the problem or like, let's say the tricky part. So if the database is going to count how many scores do we have, it's going to count only four. So in order to count how many customers do we have, either you're going to say, okay, 
count star or you're gonna like count how many customer ids do we have and you will get the same results you will get five but if you are counting like a column that contains nulls here you will have like fewer records in the results like the score we have only four with the id we have like five okay so now let's move to the next one we have the sum unlike the count the sum works only on the columns that contain numbers for example, you could do the sum on the customer ID because we have numbers inside it, on the score, on the quantity, on the order IDs, but you cannot sum the first name or sum the last names. With the count, you could do that on any type of columns, like you could do count first name, count countries, and so on. So with the sum, you deal only with numbers. And one more thing, if you have nulls, the sum gonna deal with it as a zero. So it will not ignore it. It's going to deal with that as a zero. So let's have the following task. Find the total quantity of all orders. So that means we're going to focus on the table orders and we're going to summarize all the quantities of all orders. It's really easy. Let's do that. So first of all, I would like always to start with the star from orders. And let's run this. So now I have here the table orders and we're going to focus on the quantity and we have to summarize it. So in order to do that, we're going to use the keyword sum, open brackets, and now type here quantity, close brackets, and run this. So with that, you got the total number or the total of the quantity. We summarized all the rows in one cell. So here, as usual, we have this ugly name over here so we're gonna remind like rename it some quantity run it again so now we have better name at the result so the sum of the quantity we have here 2650 okay so now let's move to the next one we have the average the average is one more aggregate function in sql and you could use it in order to find the average of one column it is almost the same as sum so it works with the columns that has some numbers it will not work the average if you use it on the first name or last name there is characters so only on the numbers but the only difference difference is that's how average gonna deal with the nulls so for example over here we have the null in the score it will not consider it as a zero as a sum but it will ignore it completely because if it's considered as a zero it's gonna be really problem using the average function so in average the nulls will be completely ignored so let's have the following example or the task find the average score of all customers so let's try to solve that we will be focusing on the table customers as usual i'm just going to select everything to check the result over here so we need the column score and we need the average of those values so in order to do that we're going to write the keyword average open brackets and then the column name and close brackets so let's run this so with that you got the average score of all customers the nulls are ignored and i like to rename it so as average score run it again so it looks better now we have the average score 625 all right so now we're gonna move to my favorite aggregate function we have min and max i use it a lot once i'm doing like data profiling in order to understand my data for example if i am profiling or like checking the table orders for first time i will be interested what is the latest date or what when was the latest order date so in order to do that we could use the max function on the order date and we're gonna get the latest value or for example i'm gonna check okay which customer has the highest score so i could go to the score and do max function so the max and min it is like the count you could use it in any type of columns so you could use it on numbers on characters on dates it's gonna work and here about the nulls it's gonna be ignored so if you are going to say okay what is the minimum value on the score you will not get the null you will get 350 with maria
So let's have some example and tasks in order to understand how to work with min and max. All right, we have the following task. It says find the highest score, the maximum score in our customers table. We have the same table over here. So I'm going to remove the average, select the data. So I want to get the highest score. So this should be John. In order to do that, we're going to use the function max, open bracket, score, close brackets, and run this. If we do that, we're going to get the 900, and that is true. Just going to rename the column. So let's run that again. We have the max score as 900. So let's now find the lowest score. So the lowest score over here should be with Maria, 350. In order to do that, we're going to use the function min on the score as well. We change the name just to look better and run that again. So with the min score, we're going to get the 350 and not the null. So this is very important. All right. So now let's keep playing with the data. Let's check the order. So I'm going to get the earliest date on the order date and the latest. So let's try to do that. I'm just going to remove that and select the table orders. So now we want to get the earliest dates and the maximum date or the latest dates from the column order date. In order to do that, we're going to use the function min, open brackets, order date, and then close it and just rename it for the results, min order date. So let's run this. And with that, we got the minimum date in the order date. So this is was the first order date in the table. And let's get now the latest one. So in order to do that, I'm just going to change the function max. And just change the name of it for the result and see. So this date is, is the latest date that we have as an order. All right, guys. So with that, we have learned all the aggregate functions in SQL. They are really important for data analytics and data science. Next, we're going to cover the string functions where we're going to learn how to manipulate the text data. And in the video description, you will find a link to free SQL materials like the database and the data of this tutorial, the SQL sheet sheet, and as well, all the presentations. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.